Okay, so on to the next track in uh, Sonia's Cool Chameleon Sound series. It's a birthday special. Once again, happy birthday. I hope you're having an awesome birthday. I hope you're enjoying, uh, uh, well, you enjoy the series. We only just got started. But this one over here now is Train Drop, uh, Drops, Drops of Jupiter, man. I apologize for my voice. Um, just uh, got a bit of a flu, but I'll be okay. Uh, the message over here is singer-songwriter Pat Mo- uh, Monahan said, I was feeling like a kid when I, uh, that lost his mom well to cancer even though i was 30 years old i felt like i was five the song the song felt like she was writing it because she was telling me this is what happens after life you can do anything you want swim through the planets and she came back with with drops of jupiter in her hair it was i think that's a flower isn't it it was a way of uh, easing my mind that it wasn't a bad thing and there most certainly are worse things than death i can guarantee you that many people will Look at that and be like, oh, that's a ridiculous statement. Trust me, it's not. There are many things worse than death. Um, But yeah, let's uh, rock and roll, man. Train, Drops of Jupiter. Sounds familiar, though. Sounds familiar. Drops of Jupiter sounds familiar for some odd reason. But let's see. Let's see what we got over here. Let's go. She's back in the atmosphere with drops of Jupiter in her head. Yeah. No, no, no. I know this song. I know this song. I know this song. It's not on my playlist. Funny enough, none of these great songs are actually on my playlist. My playlists are very specific, right? It's Hans Zimmer. And I've got a rap playlist and I've got all music composition playlists. I've literally got um, all the uh, composers of all the different music. Mu- um, I've got very specific music for very specific things. And then I've got like a massive shuffle playlist for like the weekend, essentially. Um, and surprisingly, this is not actually on one of them, but a lot of the my friends uh, absolutely love this song. And I did hear it in rotation a very long time ago. I haven't heard it in years, but it would uh, be a good thing to actually go through the lyrics now. She acts like summer and walks like rain. Reminds me that there's a time to change. Hey, hey, hey. I like that line, she acts like summer and she walks like rain. Remind me that there's a time to change. So in between all of that, or in between your life, regardless of where you go, regardless of whether you're in the storm or whether you're in the summery breeze, there's always a time to change in between all of that. I actually think that's beautiful. There's a time to change between the negative and the positive. Since the return of a stay on the moon, she listens like spring and she talks like June. Fire. Fire. I love the way he's doing this with seasons. are so well done it's so clever so poetic where he's actually playing the picture of his mother actually traveling through the vast expanse of the universe and seeing all the beautiful things and sort of asking the question in terms of that the journey she's having he's also curious about it i mean beautiful people don't write like this anymore i'm telling you now artists do not write like this anymore a lot of what artists do today that is in like high rotation that is mainstream Right, that is sausage factory type music is all one dimensional. You were looking for yourself out there. Yeah. 
two things at once. She reminds me that there's always room to grow, regardless of what situation you are in your life, regardless if it's negative or positive, and regardless of whether you're pursuing one thing or another thing, you can do both, but you can grow in both as well, right? We are capable of doing many things as human beings, right? And we grow spiritually and we grow grow uh, um, um, physically and skill, from a skill level wise and things like that. Beautiful, man. Look at, listen to that line, it's a fucking bar, oh my god. Plain Jane told me a story of about a man who was too afraid to fly so he never did land, right? He was just literally floating, confused in the abyss, right? So you'd think it's like he was too afraid to fly, which means that he was always on the ground, but if you're always on the ground, are you really, are you really landing on anything? It means that you're not taking any risks, you're too afraid to fly. So I like the actual flip on that line over there. He was too afraid to fly, so that he never actually did land, right? He never landed on anything, right? Because he wasn't willing to take any risks, yeah? He was too grounded. And sometimes too, being too grounded means that you actually don't fly anyway, right? I like that. Thing of me is, plain old Jane Doe, sorry about a man who was too afraid to fly, so he never did land. Hey. crazy that it sounds like small things but it's like it's those things that actually make us human can you imagine no love no pride no deep fried chicken right and he's literally he's reduced it down to even deep fried chicken that people love so much it's just these are these are sort of physical uh, worldly things right and he's like he tends to it's so he's kind of like just introspecting in terms of like could you imagine not having it like even a friend not sticking up for me like when we go, am I, am I just floating? Am I going out in the... Is it better than here, right? But here is actually quite beautiful because here I do feel love. Here I do feel pride. Here, I, you know, I do get to experience even the most mundane of human experiences, but it still adds so much to my existence, right? Is what I'm going to be after this life, is it going to be existing at all? Or am I just going to be energy that I'm not even cognizant of it, right? And that's usually, obviously, I mean, that's the old age question, essentially. Like, where do we go? What do we are? What are we? Who knows? Who knows? After death. Can you imagine no love, fried, deep fried chicken? Your best friend always sticking up with you. Even when I know you're wrong, can you imagine no first dance, freeze, dry? Crazy that he actually said that heaven is overrated. So it's almost like that's actually more a comfortability thing where it's like, can you tell me that heaven is overrated? Um, essentially, because we tend to look at it as like heavy and heaven is this blissful, beautiful place because, you know, we actually love to be alive. We love to be on earth, right? We love to be breathing. So just out of a comfort thing, it's like, oh, just tell me that heaven's overrated. Tell me that it's not better than this because then I'm going to feel like, you know, that, that, uh, um, you know, my existence over here doesn't have much meaning. It's like there's something greater there. Like he literally wants his life here in this uh, realm to feel like something greater than heaven. Do you know what I mean? 
So it's almost like he wants he wants her to break that myth. He wants her to break the myth that heaven is this all encompassing beautiful thing for the eternal soul. He's like, it can't be better than this. You know what I mean? That's what he's trying to say. I like is <laughs> Tell me, did you fall for a shooting star? One without a permanent scar, and then you miss me while you were looking for yourself. And the way he plays in Tell Me, Did You Fall from a Shooting Star, one without a permanent scar. So he's ba- literally saying that you're an angel that in that realm you actually don't get hurt and there are no scars, right? And in this realm, everything that happens to you leaves a scar, whether it be psychologically or whether it be physically, that scar will live there forever, it tells a story, essentially. So I like the way that he's playing that, like she's in a different realm of no pain and we are in a realm of pain, but yet our realm is also of immense and utter beauty in all factors of life right Uh, and in that realm he doesn't know so much so he wants her to refute the fact that heaven is greater than where we live i mean This song was by Train, if I'm honest. That's a beautiful song, man. We never, uh, we've, I've never looked into the lyrics of this song, and that song is absolutely beautiful. It's really, really well written, right? Really, really well written. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Didn't even know it was Train, but uh, yeah, man, I'm already in like a really good space at the moment with the music that we've listened to so far. Um, yeah, let's continue, man. This is going to be a great birthday special. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.